and it maintains a network of real-time quality monitoring stations across Singapore to detect air pollution. A number of these stations can measure low levels of volatile organic compounds, which I will shorten it from now on to VOCs, in the air. VOCs are vapors which can come from both man-made and natural resources, and they can cause smells by themselves or when they react with other VOCs. And air supplements the air monitoring stations by deploying officers to affected areas. These officers are equipped with portable instruments which can measure the levels of chemical compounds in the air. The SCDF is also equipped with portable sensors to detect and identify toxic gases, including chemical warfare agents in the air. In the late afternoon of 25th September 2017, members of the public reported smells in the Pongol and Sengkang areas. Similar reports were received from the northern and central parts of Singapore later in the evening, such as Amokyo, Toapayo, and Bukit Timah. Upon receipt of the public reports, officers from the NEA and SCDF were immediately deployed to check that the air at the affected locations was safe. The officers also conducted investigations at nearby housing estates, factories, and construction sites. Both the air monitoring sensors and the air samples collected showed an increase in the levels of some VOCs in the evening of 25th September which likely caused the smell experience. The smell could also have been intensified by the light wind conditions during the period and only dissipated later that night when winds blowing from the south and southeast picked up strength. While there have been previous, previous smell-related re incidents, this episode was more widely spread across the island. In their investigations, NEA and SCDF did not detect any buildup of harmful gases in the air or find any abnormal factory operations or incidents that could have caused the smells. Despite the increase, the levels of the VOCs detected were also well within international safety guidelines. Once this was established, the public was informed that the air was safe. At the same time, NEA informed its counterpart from the Malaysian Department of Environment in Johor of the incident and sought the assistance to locate the possible source of the smell. Following NEA's request for assistance, the DOE in Johor deployed its asset to investigate the incident. The source of the smell was finally traced to a factory in Pasir Gudang. A stop work order was issued against the operator of that facility by the DOE, and the operator was required to carry out a list of remedial actions. The Malaysia media reported on 6 October 2017 that the stop work order was lifted after the operator had completed the necessary remedial actions. Tracing the source of fugitive smell is not a straightforward process and requires time and effort. After NEA reached out to DOE, the Malaysians reacted quickly to carry out site investigation, trace the source of the smell, and take the necessary actions on the facility to rectify the problem. We appreciate their cooperation. <coughs> Industrial premises in Singapore must comply with strict regulations and guidelines on the storage and transportation of hazardous materials. For example, the Environmental Protection and Management Act, EPMA, imposes requirements on the storage, use, and transport of hazardous substances. These include putting emergency pla plans in place and preparing adequate emergency response equipment. These control measures are similar to those adopted in other jurisdictions, with each country adapting them to local requirements. Let me address, now address incidents involving terrorist attacks using chemical gases. Our agencies are prepared for such a scenario. The SEDF regularly conducts exercises simulating chemical agent attacks, where respondents are tested for their proficiency in detection, monitoring, and mitigation operations. In incidents involving toxic gases, the response of the public is equally important. 
Those in the affected area may feel unwell or experience symptoms such as giddiness and shortness of breath. SEDF's advice is that they should quickly leave the affected area and where possible, help evacuate others before seeking medical attention. For those who are unable to leave the affected area, they should go to the nearest indoor area and adopt in-place protection procedures by shutting the doors, windows, and ventilation systems like fans and air conditioners, and sealing the gaps with masking tapes to minimize the infiltration of hazardous vapors. The SEDF will also lend, send out alerts to notify the public to take the necessary precautionary measures. This alert will be sent out through all the public warning platforms, including social media, the SG Secure app, and all the free-to-air FM, radio, TV, and TV channels. <clears throat> the important message signal of the public warning system may also be activated. To learn more about how to respond in the event of an incident involving toxic gases, the public is encouraged to participate in the SEDF's Community Engagement Preparedness Program, or CEPP. The CEPP trains about 40,000 participants each year, and IPP is one of the advanced program modules. Members of the public can learn to prepare an IPP kit as well as how they can apply IPP against a chemical gas attack. More information on the IPP can be found in the Civil Defense Emergency Handbook, which can be downloaded from the SEDF website. These are among the measures that the NEA and SEDF have put in place to safeguard the health and safety of Singaporeans.